July 14, 2006. I am Jessica Clark. It is a pleasure to conduct this interview for the Dakota Memories Oral History Project in Trampy Lake, Saskatchewan. Can you please state your full name? Peter. Yarner. Okay. Where were you born? In Trampy Lake, Saskatchewan. When were you born? Uh, December 31st, 1914. Oh, you're an end of the year baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <that's> the... <laughs> um, have you ever heard a story about your birth? Except that I was born at home. Okay. A midwife. Midwife was present? Mm hmm Okay. Um, what are some of your earliest childhood memories? Oh, uh, oh, God. I remember when um, those field back here, 80 acres we call it, it, it was still all prairie world. And I remember Mom and I sitting out in the back of the house, maybe another one besides younger than me. I was quite young yet. And uh, I watched them, uh, my uncle told you, my dad, cut prairie world and stack it, you know, and Mom was sitting sewing, I guess, and Mum was always singing. She sang a lot when she was young. And uh, that's about the earliest thing that I can remember. Oh, I remember. I guess maybe my grandfather and grandmother, I remember them earlier, you know. I, was, I remember my grandfather carried me around yet anyhow, so it's a long time. Would you That's about the first memories that I can remember. The grandparents that you remember, were they your mother's parents or your father's parents? My mother's parents. Mm -hmm. What were their names? What were their names? Mm -hmm. um, the last name was Lemire. L-E-M-E-R or something like that, I guess. And their first names? Uh, uh, Jacob and Catherine. Were you close to them when you were growing oh, up? Oh, yes. Yeah, very close to them. Yeah, I was very... My grandma lived in town for the last years of her life, you know, and, and uh, I would never go to town unless I went to see her and spend a little bit of time with her, you know. Do you, um, what type of person was your grandmother? Well, I know, I guess she... We were close to her and how I mean she was we like I mean I guess she was a grandmother, you know, she and she lived till nineteen thirty eight or so, so we got to know her pretty well, you know. How how old then were you when she passed away? Um I'd be twenty about 23, I think. Mm -hmm. um, would you ever go and stay with your grandparents? Like, would you ever go to stay the night at your grandparents? House? Oh, yes. What was that like? Staying at the grandparents? Well, they lived in town then, so I'd stay. Once in a while, I'd stay. The grandmother asked me to stay for the night. They had a little single bed there, so I'd stay there. In town, when you say they live in town, was it in Tramping Lake? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are they bur all buried out in the Tramping Lake? All buried cemetery? out there, yeah. Mm -hmm. What and was? I, and I got two sisters also buried out there. Oh really? Mm -hmm. How did they die? One in 1927, and the other one in 33. All oh, they had was appendix operation. Nowadays, they, you know, it's not, that's nothing. How old were they when they died? 10 and 14. Yeah. That had not been hard for the family. Oh, yeah. The, the one that died was next to me, you know, of course, we were very close, you know. And the two, after, two daughters between me and Lawrence passed away. Lawrence is about eight years difference between, six years difference between us. Um, yeah, it's just, just both died in Corrobert in the hospital. How did they get up to there? Did they? Did your dad drive them up there, or? 
Right. How did they get up to the hospital? Katie uh, went by train, and Francis, I guess, we drove her down to corroborate, you know, and that's why we had to go to visit them while they were sick, you know. It's just about 20 miles, pretty well, you know. How long were they sick for? Katie didn't last very long, about five days. The first one and the second one went through a lot. She, she, I think she's a month and a, probably a month and a half before she passed away. So I say, doctors, uh, I guess that they weren't that knowledgeable then, you know. And I know they tried everything they, at 14 to pull all her teeth and things like that, you know. And, and she broke out in abscess all over. It took her a long time to die, but uh, it took about about a month and a half, I think. It took her. And we went down you know, probably a couple of times a week. And all you had, and that was in the winter time. You're the oldest child, right? Right. You're the oldest. Yeah. How many children are in your family? Five. Five. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's see here. What was it like growing up on the, on the prairies? Well, everybody, you didn't do much, you know, you didn't go far. Nobody ever went anywhere except town, you know, and, and uh, but I guess we had, we enjoyed our youth, you know, they all, everybody was in the same boat and nobody, had more than the, nobody had more than the other person almost that way, you know, they were all, we all the same. Oh, they, I think we had a happy childhood. We always had around 40 people going to school all the time. So you uh, you'd had a lot of friends and places to go and visit. And, yeah. Where was the farm that you grew up on in relation to Tramping Lake? We, How far was the farm from town that you grew up about on? About two miles, two and a half miles, yeah. Did you go to town to go to school or? No, we had a country school, about a half a mile from here. When you, did you like going to school? Oh yes, yeah. oh yes, I enjoyed going to school. Sometimes you didn't like your teacher, but you do. Everybody does that, you know. <laughs> but but uh, it, because we started when I started school, I couldn't speak a word of English, you know. You had to learn English first before you started <laughs> knowing what they're, they're asking you or what they wanted you to do. So in your home, you spoke only German. Oh yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your parents couldn't speak German, maybe some or they wouldn't, you know, but, uh, oh no, it's nobody that grew up my age that went to school that could speak English. Like my, most of the parents, especially the women, they didn't have to, you know, the men had a little more business to do, so they learned a little bit of English, but uh, Women, no, no, my three aunts there, they couldn't speak a word of English, and yet they all had English in-laws when their kids got married and that, you know, and they couldn't even, you know, have conversation with them because... But my mother spoke a little English because she, she worked uh, before she was married in Scott, the hospital or whatever, and uh, of course she learned some English. She learned, my mother was pretty good in English, yeah. You had mentioned that sometimes you didn't like your teachers. Did you have a new teacher every year, or did they stay well, around for a long time? We, I think we only had one teacher that I went to school that uh, stayed for two years, I guess. But we also had one year where we had two within one year. They didn't like the one or he was too rough on us kids, so they kicked him out. And we had two teachers in one year, you know. But we always, mostly every year, we had a different teacher. Yeah. 
Were the teachers male or were they female? Were they women or men? Uh, my first teacher was a female and then had one more, two females, two for women, the rest were men. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When children misbehaved in school, how were they disciplined? Oh, they, they, they tried to get the strap that hurt the most, you know, and, and oh yes, <laughs> some did, then the one teacher I'm telling you that they kicked out, well, he liked, he was just ready in the morning to, to see how many kids he could give the strap to that day, you know, he was a mean old Murphy, old Irishman. <laughs> oh yeah, they, they, they it didn't last long. But most of the teachers were, most teachers were good. Were the teachers um, older people or younger people? Well, this one, I'm particular one, I'm saying that uh, he was a, an older man, you know. And I don't think we had any real young ones. They were always, uh, had been somewhere before, you know, how teaching. Were they German? Or were they well, they tried to keep as many German teachers as they could because uh, the people were all German, you know, so some of them that you could, but mostly English, though. We only had two of them that yeah, I know of that could speak German, but then we, we never spoke German in school, though, you know. It's just that uh, it was easier to get along with the rest of the, with the, uh, the parents, you know, because he could speak the language or something like that. But mostly English people, yeah. We're all but they always tried. They always tried to have a Catholic teacher, you know. Yeah, most of I think all of them were pretty well that I know. Of. Yeah. So were the children all German, German Russian, and all Catholic? Mm -hmm. Everyone. There's never. There was never an English speaking pupil who went to our school. Not while I was going to school, and now I know. So, did you ever get in any trouble at school? Yes, uh, I, uh, uh, the reason I quit school was uh, we had a uh, school teacher and he caught us smoking, you know, so he gave us each a scribbler, and we had to stay in school for months and write down 20 times every recess, I must not smoke in school. So uh, anyhow, I put it down the last recess, I put down that 120 times. And the next day I quit school, I didn't go back to school again. <laughs> what grade were you in? Nine, yeah. When did you start smoking? Oh, I didn't, I've never smoked hard much in my life, you know. And even now I don't smoke much. Very moderate, you know, I never smoked much. But when I started, I don't think, uh, I was way in the 20s anyhow before I started. When I you... didn't start young anyhow, but this one time in school, I guess we tried it and got caught at it. <laughs> Do you remember how you got the, the cigarettes to start to smoke at school? Pardon? Do you remember where you got the stuff from? No, no. somebody must have brought some along. Do you remember any other time that you got in trouble at school? No. Oh no. Were you a good student? I think so, because we lived closest to school a half a mile, and we had did a lot for the teachers, brought them stuff, food there, you know, groceries when we went to town, you know, and uh, lots of times I brought that, get stuff for them, and I'd take it over to school. So we were kind of maybe, uh, you know, treated all, all right. Oh, yeah. So did the teachers live near the school? Did the teachers live near the school? They had a teacher at Yale. Okay. Mm -hmm. They lived there and, and um, they, in the 30s, they, they, uh, they're only getting about four hundred dollars a year. A teacher, and they supplied the coal, the fuel, teacherage. But that's about, that's it, you know. 
Erde. But uh, there. What types of uh, things did you do during your recess and noon hour? What would you do? What would you do during recess oh, hour? And play noon ball. Hour? And during the summertime, we'd play ball. During the wintertime, we'd, we'd never stay in school, and I would be out in the snow and play in the snow. And that's about all I can tell you about school. What were, when you were growing up, what were the winter months like? The win Winters, what were they like? Oh, <laughs> they were cold. I mean, lots of people, pupils missed school and a little too far away, you know, too, or too cold, but I was always, the, had the best attendance because I was closest to school, you know, that's why, you know. I was only half a mile. And I know I went to school. I remember one day that was the only one that came, so I went over to tea church and she taught me for a little bit there and then uh, I went home, you know. So. Because we used to get some a lot worse weather in the winter than we do now. Oh, yeah, lots colder weather, more snow. Did you ever experience a blizzard? Oh, yes, yeah, lots of blizzards. What were those like? Well, you tried to stay in the house if you could, you know, but then if you found me, you had to go out and do your chores, I don't know, you know, but... You know. How about the summer months? What were the summer, summer months like? Summer months, the summer months, we... with the same thing, we played, like in the same, in the summertime, we play ball and then we always, uh, our holidays never started until August, the 1st of August, because that's when harvest started and your parents need you home to help. So you had your holidays August till the middle of September or something like that. So did you ever miss school to help help on the farm? And you what? Did you ever miss school to help on the farm? Uh, no, no. So, did your parents think education was important? I don't know. Do not those days, I don't. Things were, went a lot slower paced than they do now, you know. Everything, you know, it's, it does altogether a different life. And, and uh, you had to go to school, all right, but for instance, in our school we had here, you could only go up to grade eight, well, I, a little bit of grade nine, that's where I quit. But after that, you, you had to go to Carabo to go to high school, uh, and nobody could do that, you know. I mean, in the wintertime, you, it's too far, and then the summertime, well, it's a lot of ways to go with the horses and bucky, you know, so nobody went past uh, that in our school because uh, that's as high as you could go, you know. So when you were going to school, did any of your, your brothers and sisters go to school at the same time? Not, well, not until Lawrence started. Well, my sister, two sisters did, of course, they were, went to school, but... And, uh, and the next one was Lawrence. Jack was going to school already, I think, when I, I quit. Yeah. Did you guys walk no, to school? I don't know, Jack, no, Jack wasn't, but... Oh, yeah, Jack, we were only half a mile of school, you know. Oh, yeah, we walked to school. What would you take for lunch to school? Mostly jam bread, I guess, you know. It's, it's jam and butter. We never, never had butter, hardly ever had butter because uh, didn't have enough cows, I guess, to have. So we mostly had jam bread and take a bottle of milk along maybe to school. Let's talk about your, your farm for a while that you grew up on. Your dad, what type of a farmer was he? Well, mostly they did good until the depression came along. And then, of course, nobody, you farmed, but they, nothing grew anyhow. So, but 
they're, they're just they're poor. We're poor. Well, Most you, everybody was, but we were poor. We had a big family, you know, and you were on relief for a long time, you know. You got so much a month from the government. What years did the depression? Twenty five dollars a month for families. <laughs> That's what they paid you those days. And then they were, once in a while they bring in carloads of uh Made potatoes or apples from the east, they couldn't sell them down there either, so they'd send them in to, uh, to CNR, the CPR, they brought them for free, you know. And uh, then everybody would line up downtown when the boxcar came in loaded with apples, and everybody would get whatever box of apples and, or potatoes. And, A, I know we got a bag of potatoes from the other actors down in from Chatham, Ontario. And I corresponded with the people for a little while, you know, and trying maybe to work down there, but they said no work down here either, so but I did ride the freight train for about oh, a few years across Canada looking for work. And maybe just to get away, there's nothing to do, so you ride the freight trains and see the country, I guess. <laughs> How old were you? Um, well, I was uh, 16 when the Depression started, about 26 when it ended. So from when I was about 20. I guess when I was 19 is about the first time that I went away from home to work. I went up north to, with a homesteader, helped to move up there. And then after that, I used to, to went down east to work in the wintertime, uh, Toronto, Hamilton, Kitchener, Port Arthur. And then the lumber camp in Lake Nipigon, you know, I worked. I'd go down there in the winter time and work in the summertime and go back and farm, you know. What did your dad think of you going out and working? But, they didn't like it maybe, but then there was nothing for home either, you know. They thought you had to try and find something for yourself, you know. There's nothing they could do for you at home. How many people were in in the in your house during the depression? Well, it was uh, twelve and all, but then eight, two of them passed away before the depression. So, ten, five brothers and five sisters. When uh, the depression hit, what? What was the weather like at that time? Hot and dry, mostly hot and dry. How did that affect the crops? Well, there's years we didn't have any crops. Just uh, they didn't farm those days like they do now. You know, with the horses, you couldn't, couldn't farm like you can, you know. When, Till you saw you couldn't go down deep enough with the horses, you know, you always had to use what you, whatever your horses you could do, you know, or pull. So, so it, and then it didn't rain, it just didn't rain, that's what it was, you know, dust, storms, and rain. And uh, there was no crops. What were the dust storms like? Not. N out west, they, they always had better crops, they had better land, heavier land, you know. So they, they had, so we'd get the straw or the kiff in the wintertime for our horses from those places, you know. They still all threshing machines those days, and you just had, the, you know, straw piles, and, and then that's how we went to get some straw in the wintertime, because they usually had crops, heavier land, and. But our land here didn't uh, 
took the, the moisture left it too quickly, and I just the hot weather soaked the moisture right out of it in no time. So there was uh, not much from 1929-30. There was no crops until the 40s. The dust. I might get enough for seat next year and have a little bit to, a bit to sell, but you might as well say there was nothing that to make a living on. Most everybody had to get help from the government to live. Did your dad ever have to get another another type of job or employment during that time? No, no. Was he able to keep food on the table for the family? Yes, look, oh yeah, we always see, we always see what we did in the fall. We took a, a load of wheat, we had it to the Unity flour mill and got 20 bags of flour, 100 pound bags. It's a lot of, a lot of meals were made out of flour, you know, and they, from the old country, you know, they knew how, you know, how to do all those things. And we ate good, you know, we ate good, we never went hungry. We never went hungry. You mentioned the dust storms that, that, that oh, came yeah. around at that time. What were they like? Oh, well, they got so bad. It was, it was bad enough here, but then when we went further south, it's just you couldn't... I know I was in Fox Valley one time, and in the dust storm, the worst down there, and you could hardly see across the street, you know. It just choked you, you know. You'd, um, you had to cover your face when you get on, get into them. But here they were in quite a bad, but they were still bad enough so that the dust laying on the windowsills in the more little part. Oh, yeah, they were bad enough here too. But. So as the oldest child, what chores did you have to do? Who, me? Yeah. Well, I just uh, helped my, I the oldest, I helped my dad. I, and um, after I left school, of course, I, I did, did most of the work on the fields, you know, because we only had the one team, horses, you know, one plow or whatever it was. So I did most of the work after I left school. I mean, I, until the other boys grow older, and then, of course, they help. And what type of fields did, did your dad have? What type of crops? Right. What type of crops did your dad have when you were growing up? Crops? Yeah. Well, until the, until the 30s came along, they had, they had pretty good crops, you know. They built, we had to build a big barn, and they had a house, and that's how they must have had made a little money, you know, before the 30s. So yeah, they were, they were doing all right. But my dad never had much land anyhow, but but I guess they did all right. How yeah, much land yeah. did he have? He only had a, a quarter and a 80 acres. That's all he had. And he grew wheat? Hmm? Do you say he farmed wheat? Wheat and oats. Yeah. What type of farm equipment did you have on the farm when you were a kid? So it's standard equipment, you know, drill and um, plows and discs. That's about it, three of them, the plow, the disc, and the harrows and the cedar. It's all horses, of course, you know. You know. What other type of animals did you have? Yeah, just horses and cows. Mm -hmm. Did you have any ch chickens? Enough cows, a couple of cows, enough for you to feed your family and milk. That's, what, that's all they allow you, the government. So they, they give you feed, for you, but they, they only allow you. It depends on your family. If you had a bigger family, you got enough, they give you enough feed for two cows. And uh, if you had more, you had to get rid of them. They, you wouldn't get any feet, so they were sold. Anybody had 
more than you get ten dollars a car. That's what you got. It doesn't matter. So um, we did. That's what we we were allowed two cows because we had a big family. But that's all the animals we had. We never had any other sheep. Or, well, of course, you had chickens and pigs and that. But everybody has that. Do you have any ducks or geese? Yeah. How about dogs? Do you have any dogs? On the farm? Oh yeah, we always had a couple of dogs. Oh yeah. And geese, we always had geese because I think Greeny still got a feather tick that my mom made, you know, from the geese. We were warm anyhow, it didn't matter how cold it was in the house. We were warm. The goose feathers, you know, and uh, yeah. You mentioned um, having pigs. Did you help in the butchering process? Anyway. Did you help butcher the I pictured many of them. What was that like? Oh, it's, it's just a day's job. I went down east and I worked in a lumber camp and the guy asked me if I, I was in the west, would I could kill pigs. I said, I killed lots of them. So I had, a, all winter, I had for 35 lumberjacks, you know, how much pork they eat in the I, I had to do all the pig killing and getting it ready for him. He get, paid me extra for it, for doing that, so. <laughs> oh yeah, that was normal, that was his day's job. Beef or anything like that, you know. Yeah, that's, they get together, you know, two or three people get together and and for a place, you know, some of you had a big pigs or heavy, or, or if you uh, an animal, uh, uh, a, a steer, you know, or whatever, you always had a neighbor help you and you helped them, and that's the way they did it. Oh, yeah. Was that the same for, for threshing time, where you would help each other out? For threshing time? Yeah. Is, was, is that the same type of thing where the neighbors would help each other out? No, no. Threshing time, somebody had to, oh no, the, the threshing machine, and they'd come around and they'd thresh your crop, and then you go to the next one, farmer, but then, and then you, you worked for that same farmer or whoever had to, for the, until harvest was over, or threshing was over, you know. And so who had the threshing machine when you were growing up? Who had a threshing machine when you were growing oh, up? Oh, there's, there's a lot, quite a few of them around. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, there's a, oh, there's quite a few of them around. Sorry, machines. I know there's too many of them that you, I mean, there's a lot of threshing machines around. They thresh for maybe three or four farmers, whatever. But then you, you stooped. There was no combines those days. You'd, everything was in stooks, you know, and you stooped it in stooks, and then you came along with and loaded the up in your, on your racks and hauled it to the machine and threw it to the machine and back and get another load and <laughs> one field to the next until they were finished. It usually lasted maybe three weeks, thrashing, if the weather was good. You mentioned um, uh, feather ticks keeping you warm. What what type? What was your house like that you grew up in? It was cold. We had our house wasn't even insulated, you know, except to to one room. That was my grandmother's when they she passed away. She left the house to my mom, you know, what the little house they had, and it's still out there. You'll see it later on. And it was insulated, so that's where I spent. Everybody went to bed at night. And uh, we had coal oil lamps, of course. And uh, so I they had one in the kitchen and one in the living room. And then when everybody went to sleep, I was the oldest, of course, for a few years. And I'd take the lamp out of the 
living room put in the kitchen. I had two lights, and I'd sat there till two o'clock in the morning with my books, you know, reading and with my books. I was, I was always a lot of books, you know. So that's why then it was warm, it was insulated, you know. <laughs> but I guess every day we got cold, we had those feather ticks, you know, and there's, of course, there's always two or three sleeping together in the home, and it kept you warm. Many rooms were in that old house? Just the two. Just the well, you might say three. They had a little lean to build onto. That's where we had two beds. And that one at the far end, that was mom and dad's. And, and babies, so whenever the babies were, that was still with mom and dad. And then in between, we had the. It was a living room, kitchen, and everything combined, you know. This was a smaller house. But uh, I know in the 30s, you figured that, I said so long, you figured that's the way it's going to be forever, you know. And, and uh, it took the war, to, it took the war to get uh, things moving again, you know. And, and then the drought was over too, but then, you know, in the 40s we started getting better crops. And, and then later on, the, you got better machinery to work with, you know, you had more modern machinery and so you had more chance to raise a crop, you know, and then you got fertilizer, which you didn't have, and they had uh, a spray where you killed all your... The weeds is what killed our crops, mostly. In the early days is the weeds. They took most of the moisture out of your ground. And then later on you got spray, now you don't have no more weeds. You spray them and then you're gone. And then you got fertilizer, all those things you didn't have those days, you know. that's. that's Plus no rain, so then it was dirty turdies, what they call it, and that's what they were. So when you were growing up, who was responsible for uh, the house, the household chores, like doing the cooking and the cleaning inside the house? Who was responsible for that? Oh, uh... I don't know, I guess we all helped. Uh, it was, uh, uh, I'd say Lawrence was, uh, they probably, he was the next one. Uh, my two sisters have been twins. Mama never had no help from the daughters because they'd passed away, you know, so. The next ones were boys, three of them, before there was any more girls again, you know. And uh, Lawrence got pretty good, you know, uh, he helped. Big pies and all that, you know. He, he did, he helped more, more than anything because I was older already, I did more to do outside, you know. And But we all helped him, you know. Dad, especially, Dad, he was washing the scrub board, had no washing machine, scrub board. And, uh, and I think Mom, Dad, who's always up there with sleeves rolled up and washing away, and he helped Mom help. That, that helped Mom a lot. Right. Oh, yeah. Hanging the clothes out or everything. He did that in the winter time when it was cold, you know. That helped a lot. That's when I was younger that I remember until. Yeah. So, hanging the clothes out in the winter time, did that actually dry the clothes or? Yeah, to try them, and then you bring them in, you they'd stand up, you know. <laughs> but they sure smelled nice, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they'd put them out, and they'd freeze out, I guess, whatever it was. But they sure smelled nice when they put them, brought them in, and they started thawing out, you know. <laughs> so what type and they were of clothes, fresh. What type of clothes did you wear back then? Just to... Uh, Teens and long underwear, combination underwear, you know. That's in the winter time, that's what you wore. Overshoes, shoes and then overshoes and trying to get 
you keep your feet warm and you had a, a cap, you know, with flaps sewn for your ears and oh yeah. Did you have um, a different outfit or a different set of jeans for every day or did you reuse the same clothes oh, more yeah. than you know. <laughs> No such a thing as every month, maybe or six months. <laughs> Warm until they wore out, that's about it, you know. You maybe you didn't have two pairs in the hard times. You just wore them, washed them and wore them again. What type of clothes did you uh, wear to go to church? You try to have a suit, yeah. You, always, you wore a suit to go to church, yeah. With that large of a family, did everybody have a, did all the boys have a suit or? Yeah, pretty well, yeah. Mm -hmm. When I started, when we were going to church, we still had those, what you can, short knickerknackers, pants, you know, strap around here, you know. And that's the style then, when I started, I was young, and I know when I got my first pair of uh, pants, with long legs, I, I, I didn't want to wear them. I felt ashamed, you know, like wearing long pants after all, after I hadn't been used to wearing, you know, short pants. What did you wear to school? Yeah. You had different, uh, different clothes that you worked in from what you wore to school, or? Oh, yeah, same clothes. Same clothes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So you mentioned that your dad would help with the laundry. What would you use for a, a laundry soap for detergent? What would you use? For they, uh, they made their own soap out of uh, fat, you know, hog fat or, or uh, beef fat, if you kill it. Render it. We rendered it in a big tub, and you made your own soap. Yeah, it was good soap, but it was strong soap, but it was good soap. Oh yeah, that's what most people did. How often would you have to make that? Just only in the fall, I guess. Usually you never killed the beef until the fall. You had no fridge or anything like that. So you had to kill it when it was cold, so we'd freeze it, you know. And we had, um, for instance, we had to pick with freeze them and then hang, have them hanging out in the granary, you know, and then bring them in one year. And uh, that's when you would make your fat, you know, in the fall. Oh yeah, I remember making that and stirring. You had to st keep stirring it. And, and uh, sometimes I had to, I had to it didn't, wasn't order food, I think I had a cousin or whatever died, you know, falling into one of those. And, you know, my, my cousin, she fell in when they made that, uh, that soap and her skull at her arm, and uh, it's and, uh, pretty bad, you know. It took a long time to heal. So it was really hot, you know, you had to watch it. It, was, it had to be hot when you store it, real hot, you know. Just boiling almost, you know, and to render it. When you were growing up, what were some of the, the traditional uh, meals that would be made? Meals? Yeah, what would you have? Like I said, we, we never, in the summertime, of course, you didn't have pork or anything, like because, well, you could, uh, you could smoke it and then it would be pretty good, but usually in the summertime, the chickens is what we ate in the summer. We always had chickens. <laughs> And ducks, you know, and geese, you know, we had all those. That's what you had. Did you ever have to help clean the chickens and, and get them ready for the meals? Oh, yeah, clean them our own. Oh, yeah. We clean them our own and 
and just chase them, catch one, and that looked big enough, and then chop its head off. And oh yeah. What was um? What would you usually have for breakfast? Oatmeal. Oh, that's a big dish of oatmeal in the morning, and Mom had a big pot, and she made it every morning, and and that was good for the day almost. You know, you took a lunch to school with porridge. You know, it, uh, that's what we grew up on. Our cream of wheat, you know, and, but it's mostly porridge. We like best, best, I guess. How about for desserts? What were some desserts back then? What Eric Mom could make out of bread, you know, bread pudding, uh, or, and you'd buy, you could buy the dried apples in a barrel in town, and Mom would stew them, and we'd have apples. Did you ever help your mom with the cooking? Oh yeah, everybody helped doing something. What if? You know, you know, I don't know, I guess it just, you said to help whatever, if you had to do something while well, you did it, you know, whether. But, uh, we grew up happy, we were happy, you know. We, everybody was poor in the thirties, thirties, anyhow, and everybody was in the same, and then, oh yeah. Did you ever have any then of course after the war then you got jobs if you went one two three goes anywhere you just like in the winter time I went I was farming already then but every winter I went down east Toronto and about three different years winters I worked there and then like I said before Kitchener Hamilton and Port Archer lumber camp I worked one winter and the spring you come back and farm you know because I was single so well we'll ask a couple of concluding questions because our tape is almost up um, what was what it was uh, the most adventurous thing you did as a child I wouldn't say you would know what to tell you Nothing, nothing much happened then. How you know you were home and nobody, you know, went uh, except the next town. Maybe that's as far as you ever got. So it's just, you know. How about what was the scariest? What was the scariest childhood experience you had? Serious. Scary. The only thing is, is when I, on one of my trips down east, I ended up in the hospital in Port Arthur. Today it's Thunder Bay, in those days it was Port Arthur in Fort William, you know. And I was in the hospital down there for five weeks and nobody knew where I was. My parents didn't know where I was and I didn't have anybody come to see me for five weeks, you know. <laughs> Stomach operation, stomach. Yeah. And the last question: um, Why do you feel it's important to tell your story? Well, I didn't know anybody ever wanted to hear it, but I feel it's important. All right, you know, it's important to hear it. There's not much else I can tell you. <laughs> okay.